In this lesson, we'll learn how the Envy menu system works and how it's organized. We'll briefly touch on the most popular settings and options, leaving more detailed explanations for a later lesson. The idea here is just to get familiar with the general layout of the menus and their navigation. We'll also review the context-sensitive help system. This makes using the Envy an absolute breeze, providing helpful tips on screen as you move from setting to setting. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, let's take a look at the four main menus within the Envy. You've got the Information menu, Configuration menu, Settings menu, and finally, the Profile menu. To bring up the Information menu, press the I button in the top right corner of the remote, or you can also press the OK button when there's no other Envy menus open. Let's go ahead and pull that open now. This is the first page of the Information menu that has the incoming signal information. There's also the outgoing signal information, the display information, and finally, the system information. We're gonna go back to that first menu page, but before we go on further, please take a look at the bottom left corner of the screen. You'll see the context-sensitive help. This is really helpful because as you move through the Envy, it gives you help about what the line item is you're on. So if you're ever not sure what a setting is or how to set it, just take a look at that for useful tips and tricks. Now, let's move on to the configuration menu. To bring up this menu, click the gear button on the remote. The configuration menu is used to configure options that generally don't need to be changed after an initial setup is completed. Let's take a closer look at our first menu page. Here we have the display configuration page. This is where you can set your preferred output resolution, such as 4K, 5K, or even upscaling to 8K. The defaults are usually fine. However, it is important to enter the measured peak luminance of your display. This is just a fancy way of asking what your display's maximum brightness is. This value is very important for the optimal HDR tone map. We'll cover how to measure or estimate this in an upcoming lesson. One important note before we continue, any changes made in the menu when in the active configuration view, like shown here, are only temporary. These will revert when the HDMI signal changes by design. To make them permanent, you must save them to the base layer by pressing the green button on the Envy remote or save them to a profile. We'll cover much more about this in an upcoming lesson. Next is a display calibration page. The defaults are usually fine unless you're calibrating your display, in which case you'll select the calibration in the first setting here. If you're not using a calibration, it's important to set the transfer function value to match the gamma setting in your display. For instance, if your display is set to a gamma of 2.4, you need to set the transfer function here to the same value. Also, note that the HDR flag should always be off, except for advanced use cases. So, unless you know exactly why you should turn this on, please leave it off, even for HDR content. Don't worry, the Emmy will still do all your HDR processing with this flag set to off. Next is the screen configuration page. If you have a screen aspect ratio other than 16 by 9, such as 235, you'll use a screen boundaries wizard to set up the Envy for your exact aspect ratio. The geometry correction option is used to fix any misalignment typically found in a projector setup, such as a distorted corner or an image not perfectly filling your screen. It can also be used to perfectly correct barrel distortion caused by an anamorphic lens. You can also fit an image to a curved screen or even create a cool curved screen effect in your own theater. If you're using an anamorphic lens, you'll set that option here as well. And the shift image option is used to move the image to the top or bottom of the screen when watching a scope movie on a 16 by nine screen Many users with 16 by 9 screens find that more enjoyable compared to watching the image with large black bars both above and below the screen. Next, we have the black bars configuration. The defaults are usually fine, except if you have a scope screen, you may want to customize the subtitle handling. We'll cover that in a future lesson. Next is a custom zoom configuration page. This is where you can configure the nonlinear stretch, also known as NLS, which can be a combination of stretch and zoom. 
This provides a great deal of flexibility in how you like to minimize or even eliminate black bars. Note, you can easily assign different settings for every aspect ratio, like listed here. Or, more simply, just use our profile called Screen Fit, which has NLS presets for all aspect ratios configured as most users prefer them. Next, we have the HDMI configuration page. There's rarely any need to change these default. Next is a remote control configuration page. You'll use this menu to customize the actions of the Envy remote control buttons. For example, you can set the green button to toggle Motion AI on and off. Or maybe instead you want to use this button to activate a custom profile. We'll talk about those in just a bit. Note, each button can be assigned a different action based on whether it's pressed or press and held for one second. Also, if you should ever get stuck by choosing an unsupported output resolution, you can press and hold the red button for five seconds, which will force the display back to 1080p60. Next, we have the configuration menu. This allows you to customize the look of the menus, such as their transparency, and whether you want to show the signal information for a few seconds when the signal changes. Next is the settings management page. Here you can backup and restore your MV settings to the cloud or factory reset your MV. You can also instantly restore your settings from a local backup, which the MV automatically creates for you every day. Next is the power and cooling page. This enables you to control whether the MV will turn off when there's no signal and your preference for its power draw. You can also set your preference for Envy's cooling system. For instance, when running in a rack outside the room, we recommend using the rack mode. It runs a bit cooler at the expense of a little more fan noise, although it will still likely be among the most quiet components in your rack. Whereas silent mode is recommended if the unit is positioned near you inside the theater. The MV runs very cool and very quiet, and generally, you can't hear it even more than a couple feet away. Lastly, the firmware update configuration page is where you can easily download and install firmware updates. You can choose whether you want release builds, beta builds, or even experimental builds. You can easily jump back and forth between newer and older firmware versions, making it easy to try new features without worry. Now let's move on to the settings menu. To bring up this menu, click the remote button with the sliders icon. Unlike the configuration menu, where the choices are generally not subjective, such as what output resolution should be used and what the maximum brightness of the display is, the settings menu is used for options that are generally set to personal taste. For example, to personalize the look of HDR and to turn on and configure Motion AI. First up is our HDR settings page. This page is where you set your preferred HDR dynamic tone mapping options. For instance, you can choose between a natural look or one that's more punchy, or running with highlight recovery on insane and contrast recovery on high, as many people like to do. We'll cover these settings in a later lesson, but generally the defaults are good to start with. If your brightness preference is set to plus five on your unit, we recommend changing that back to neutral, unless you have a fairly dim projector setup. Next is the motion and deinterlacing page. This page is mainly used to enable motion AI and set your preferences, such as turning it on and whether you want to run it at 48p or preferably at 120p output if your display supports it. We'll be spending a lot of time covering motion AI in a later lesson. Next is the artifact removal page. These settings are great for cleaning up an image that has banding, ringing around objects, mosquito noise, or excessive film grain. When viewing high quality source material, such as 4K movies, generally you won't need to use these settings. Next is the upscaling and sharpening page. Here you can choose between different forms of upscaling and the options to add perceived detail to an image. These settings are just a matter of taste. For instance, we find many of our customers prefer the settings you see here. However, if you like a more pure image, you may prefer these settings off. Up next is the incoming video overrides page. These advanced settings can be used to rectify incorrect signal information coming from the source device, which is very rare. You shouldn't need to use these settings. However, overriding the movie aspect ratio can be useful in some situations. For example, if you have an automated masking screen, but you don't want the masking changing back and forth during a multiple aspect ratio movie. 
Next is the image adjustments page. These settings can be used to make temporary changes to the image levels and saturation. Generally, you shouldn't need to use these settings either. But if you find a particular show has an issue, like being a little too saturated, you can easily tweak that here. Next is the custom zoom page. These settings are handy if you're using our nonlinear stretch to minimize or eliminate black bars. Although nonlinear stretch is configured in the custom zoom settings found in the configuration menu, which we covered earlier, this page in the settings menu makes it quick and easy to customize the NLS for the current content. For instance, if you're watching a football game and want to quickly make some minor adjustments to the nonlinear stretch, you can conveniently do that here just for the current game rather than digging back through the configuration menu. Finally, let's review the profiles menu. To bring up this menu, click the button with the two overlapping squares on the remote. Profiles are a convenient way to recall a group of settings for a special purpose. Some examples include using different settings with a particular source device, like an Apple TV, or for viewing with room lights on, or for sports viewing. This menu is where profiles are created and activated. They can also be activated automatically with a control system like Crestron or Control 4, or based on the incoming video signal. You can also activate profiles using the colored buttons on the Envy remote, as assigned in the remote control configuration menu, which we touched on earlier. Here you can see some specific profile groups set up on this Envy, with the group listed on the left, and the profiles in that group listed on the right. For instance, we have a profile group for source devices, displays, nonlinear stretch, and motion AI. Profiles are an important part of managing MV settings, and we'll be covering profiles in depth in a future lesson. Well, that wraps up our overview of the MV menu system. We hope you enjoyed it, now, let's move on to our next lesson.